the way I th- I would look at myself is and my work is the, is the way that I orient grain uh, to take advantage of the grain patterns and and colors and stuff like that. I spend so much time. Well, not so much time, but thought. I put a lot of thought into that, and I'm very careful to do these things. And uh, somebody the other day, I'd posted, I think it was this piece. Uh, and the guy says, boy, well, it really takes you a lot of uh, experience and, and so forth to do that. And, and, I, and I told him, no, I didn't think it did. It just requires you paying attention. The, the vessel is turned. And if you do, if you do carving like this, a heavy carving, uh, since the wood is green, there's a chance it might crack along one of those thinner areas. And so you can do surface textures and stuff while the piece is green, you know, when you're not removing a lot of wood. But if you do deep lines or something like this, then you have to, uh, there's a chance that it would crack. So I, I usually don't do that. This was a nice one. If you like pretty wood, that ought to do it. This is a real. Th- this piece has the uh, the pith right down the center, and and uh, that that presents some problems sometimes. But what that does is it gives you this this pattern that radiates out from the opening all the way around, so it looks like it's dripped down. So maybe like glaze on a on a pot, so, as opposed to this one, which does not have the pith in the center. So the other side of this piece looks different than this where this piece you know has the same appearance all the way around this is a really big piece this is i don't know 20 inches or so that was a you know 70 pound chunk of wood when it started but uh yeah but there there is no second turning they're all turn green start to finish and that's that's where the the careful orientation comes into effect is you you have to you know if you if you don't do it a certain way then then the then the movement that the piece takes is going to be uh obvious or objectionable Uh, i like to minimize the effect of that movement so it's not apparent in most of my pieces you know and the carving then i can incorporate the carving into that movement and and uh, so you don't really see it, but you have to be careful in the way it's oriented. This okay. uh, I made about seven or eight of these pieces. Uh, Vicky, I have one here, uh, or Vicky has one here, and then uh, I'm not sure which one this is, but uh, one one went to the White House collection of American Craft, which is now now in the Clinton Library in Little Rock. The year of American craft was 1993. So that's when we all, uh, Vicky and I went to the White House. Uh, Ellsworth went, was with us. There were, I don't know, there were 30 craftspeople or so that went to this thing. It was really very cool. A, a, a good thickness for green turning in general is a quarter inch, five sixteenths. I don't make things, ultra, if you make things ultra thin, then you get... Uh, you can get some bizarre distortions. Uh, there's a mechanical strength to these things by leaving a little thickness, uh, by, you know, from the shape. Now, the, the ones that have, have uh, the deep carving or flutes, they have to be left thicker. So they may be three-eighths and in up to as much as half an inch. And the thicker I leave it, then the more caution I have to uh, exercise to be sure that they don't crack. And, like I said, I'll leave them a little thicker and then I'll put them in in a cabinet and let them dry for a few days that way so they don't dry too quickly. You know, my ideal source of wood is I have the entire log here and I just cut off of it as I as I work. If you yep. start cutting, if you cut a bunch of blanks out of your log, you probably screwed up. Okay. Because Thank most you. people do that and then it cracks and checks and then they turn it anyway because because damn it i i dragged this home and i cut, went through the trouble cutting it up i'm gonna make something with it so now you got a piece 
that's that's full of cracks and uh if 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 I turned a piece and it had a little crack in it uh unless there was some way to completely conceal that uh I, I would I just I, I would reject it and as a pair they those are in the uh Victoria and Albert Museum in London this is a silver maple burl again if you like pretty wood that's kind of Nice. I did a series of these spiral pieces for a show at the late Del Mono Gallery. I thought they were kind of fun. They probably weren't the best for a C piece that I ever made, but I liked them a lot. Uh, red Maple Burl. That was a really nice tree. I made a little money from that one in it. Uh, some nice pieces. Uh, cherry. I love cherry. And again, playing with the sapwood and, and, and it's no, no accident that that, this little sapwood patch here, you know, showed up there where it did. That's an intentional manipulation of the piece of wood to get that effect. Uh, this is a dyed ash. I like that one a lot. I've never done any more like it. The piece in front is honey locust, and the and then that's a bronze casting in the back. I did, I don't know how many pieces I did that. I made bronze castings of the original piece and sold them together. These are in the Philadelphia Museum of Art. So well, that one's kind of fuzzy. Sorry, it's not a very good picture, but that's the top of that piece, which I think makes a great photograph. That's a fossil walrus ivory in the top. A walnut. This was one of the AAW auction pieces one year. Now that, that you ask about how long it takes, something like this takes a long time. That's a lot of carving. A copper lid on a mesquite, on a mesquite jar. And these, these have steel lids. That one has a copper lid. That's rosewood. Uh, cherry. These, these, these jars are usually end grain pieces. This is a side grain piece. And the hard thing there, and nobody ever notices this, is that little trivet. See how the one corner's lifted up? Nobody ever notices that. Uh, the, the wood is poplar that's uh, milk painted and textured, and then the bottom is steel. Uh, and that, that steel bowl is hammered out here in my shop on a, on a stump. This is uh, copper. This was also made at Penland. That's copper and cork. Uh, the cork is like turning styrofoam. Uh, cherry burl. Uh, the trouble with cherry burl is ever finding anything that's clean like this piece without any. They're normally full of bark inclusions, and holes and cracks and stuff. So this was a really primo piece. And these little bowls, I don't make a lot of bowls. People certainly don't know me for my bowls, but copper this one has copper leaf on the inside and this is copper leaf that's been uh patinaed and this one has copper leaf on the outside that's been patinaed red maple or or as i tell people if you if you paid fifty dollars for the for the the blank of this wood from from one of the wood dealers then it's ambrosia maple if you pay fifty dollars for the whole log then it's just red maple and this is a, a recent piece i think we're about done here so uh i really like this piece and that has a that, that steel lid and a steel and you can see the little ears on the side here are uh part of the piece so all that has, this one leaves a band all the way around it that has to be carved away in order to leave these two little ears for the for the steel and there's a similar piece 
and a little teapot. Uh, probably the last piece I finished here. There you thank go. Thank you, John. There we go. Very good. Yep. Yep. Guys, thank, thank you, thanks John. for having me. I'll join in one one Thursday here before long and just to hang out. Wood shop. Thank God for wood. <laughs>